Hey y'all. So, I went to a con yesterday and I cannot wait to tell you guys about it. Um, but I've already told you guys about it. I actually filmed another video and I realized how long it was and the length of it didn't bother me because, you know, con videos are usually long, uh, or longer. Uh, but I realized with my slow software, it would take literally forever for it to upload from my phone to the software. So we're, we're doing something different. If you notice me doing this a lot, this is me hitting the start and stop button. Okay, because that, that Jack Skellington video that I uploaded a while back, I had to cut it into five parts in order for it to just upload itself, finally. Because I tried like ten times and it still c wouldn't do it. Because uh, it kept crashing. <clears throat> so every time I see this go around, say, five or so minutes, five to eight minutes, I'm going to go in here and start and stop. I'm going to try and edit it out, but if you guys see me doing that, that's why. So anyway, let's talk about the con. So my main reason for going was... Jason David Frank. Yes. Tommy Oliver himself was there. And, uh, okay. Here, here's where the story starts. So, they've had him lined up to do this con for about a year. He was the first one there. He was the first one, you know, signed up. Uh, and, and immediately I was like, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going again. This, this is something I am going to do my best unless something horrible happens. I'm there. Uh, so... We got to the con, and we all knew he was going to be a little late. He wasn't going to be there as soon as it started, because the con was on the 8th. It was the Arkansas Comic Con, by the way, in Little Rock. Uh, but the day before, he also, he was in Utah at a con, Salt Lake City Comic Con. So the man woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning to try to get a plane to be there by about 1. He said he would start signing at 1. That plane had maintenance issues, so they had to switch him to another plane. When he finally made it, he had a connecting flight to Dallas. He went to Dallas, missed his flight, and the other, they said three other aircrafts had maintenance issues. And he kept posting about this stuff all day long on Instagram and Facebook. And people were already, even though they knew he wasn't anywhere there yet, anywhere near there yet, people were still lining up. Uh, I wasn't one of the first. I was still kind of like, yeah, I'm not waiting around forever. Uh, my mom, my mom went with me. She doesn't care anything about comics or anything, Power Rangers, nothing. Uh, she just came because, uh, she and I like spending time together. <laughs> uh, but she stayed around where the booth was set up for Jason. Uh, I kept walking around. Uh, I got a call from her telling me to meet up back at the booth. And when I went there, she said that she got out her Facebook because that was right when we both pretty much decided we need to just stop uh, just get out of line it's not gonna happen today I was very disappointed because we only had the tickets for Saturday not the following day uh, and we all knew he was gonna be there Sunday no matter what but so I was a little bit bummed that I probably wasn't gonna get to meet him uh, but then my mom checked Facebook I don't I have Facebook I don't use it she does she checked it and he had a video where he was on the plane. He finally got a plane. And he was telling everyone, if you're in line at the Arkansas Comic Con, spread the word, I'm on my way. And he had already talked to the people running the convention. He's gonna, since it was getting so late in the day, this was already way in the afternoon. And the con stopped at 6. Uh, he said that we're, when I get there, they're, he's gonna try to get a, in a different room instead of that little booth that they had set up in the convention hall they were going to go into a panel room and do the signings there and they were going to keep the con going or not the con but the uh, room open until the last person left so in order to disperse the crowd they gave us all these little square vouchers that were in different colors the first one was green the second was white and the third was red i like how they were that clever at least uh, but anyway and so the color voucher you got was the color was the order you got to be in line pretty much and i had a white one so i was in the middle pretty much they announced it over the loudspeaker about an hour before the con was supposed to end so around five telling the people with the colored vouchers you know in what order to go and wait at the end of the hall 
So we all went out and they put us in different lines. The white, the uh, greens were in the middle, the whites were on the left side of the room, the reds were on the right. And we all just pretty much sat there for, or st stood there for a minute and then we were like, yeah, th this is gonna take a while. We all sat down on the floor <laughs> and waited and waited. An hour passed, finally he shows up at around, probably it was close to 6.30. And the crowd just erupts. And he actually posts an Instagram video of him finally entering. <laughs> I'm not in it because I was still on the other side of the room in the floor. Uh, but he finally showed up. And he said that as when he finally got to Arkansas and to Little Rock, that, we, that it was the middle of a storm, a thunderstorm. <laughs> and they said that they couldn't taxi him to the con because the lightning was everywhere. So he had another delay. And eventually, he, he got there anyway, he stuck it out, uh, he braved the storm going from the airport to the convention, which wasn't that far, but still. Uh, and he was there until the very last person left. Uh, and that was around probably close to 10, probably 9, 30, 10. Uh, and again, he woke up at 3, 30, 3 o'clock that morning. I finally left at about 8, around, almost 8, it was not quite 8 yet. So if you add up the amount of time that I stood in line for Jason David Frank, it would probably add up to about three to four hours. <laughs> if anyone ever looks to me and claims that I'm not a Power Ranger fan, I got news for them. Because <laughs> not anyone who wasn't a fan would not have waited that long. Now because you know it was so late and he was in trying to get everyone in, none of us have really had a chance to uh, talk to him. So we pretty much just got autographs and pictures and left there was one little boy though <laughs> he was in the green line so he was in the middle of the room and he just started screaming jason jason like as soon as he got into line pretty much well not soon he started playing with his toy truck but after that he got bored and then he started screaming so <laughs> when jason finally showed up and he had finally quieted down a little bit because i think he was getting on everyone's nerves and he realized it <laughs> The little guy, as soon as he saw Jason, he barreled into him. He grabbed him around the knees and everyone just went, aww. <laughs> it was really cute. Um, but yeah, Jason Jason stuck it out the entire time. You, I could tell he was dead on his feet. So I, I didn't mind not being able to talk to him. I wished I could have. Uh, but yeah, you know, just the fact that he persisted that much because... Yeah, you know, my mom was like, he's just doing it for the money. I'm like, mom, he makes so much money at different cons all year long. He could definitely afford to miss one day and just say, screw the Saturday people. Let's just go to Sunday and get some rest. But he didn't. He stuck it out for everyone who was in line. And like I said, he was there for hours, just standing there and taking pictures and doing autographs. So thank you, Jason David Frank, <laughs> for being persistent in getting to Arkansas and uh, having the patience to wait us all out and let us have a chance to shake your hand and meet you. So that was all I was really wanting. Uh, I got to tell him that I'd been waiting a year and that the even the long wait all day was totally worth it and he thanked me for it. So that was pretty much as far as the conversation as it went with us, but um, I, I don't care. <laughs> it was still awesome. Uh, he signed my white tiger or not my white tiger my white ranger <laughs> funko pop this is the original one not the re not the uh remake but this is the original one and he also signed my megazord now i know you guys can't tell this is jason's autograph that one is david fielding zordon austin st john jason and walter jones zach so now i have one two three four five there's one on this side five people from Mighty Morphin to sign this thing and hopefully there'll be more. Okay, so that's the Jason David Frank story. <laughs> uh, now let's get on to the actual con. So when we got there, my mom and I went around to the booths just to see who all was there yet because some of the guests still hadn't shown up, but one of them that did was Johnny Young Bosk. He uh, played Adam, the second Black Ranger. He also voiced a bunch of different anime. I didn't say that in my other video. Uh, but he voiced a lot of different anime characters and everyone in line were, was like, I totally forgot he did so so many different anime voices. The only two that's coming off the top of my head right now is Artemis from Sailor Moon Crystal and the kid from Yokai Watch. But he did so many more. Uh, but mainly, you know, Power Rangers is his thing. That's what he's known for. 
Um, and now when I got up to him, mind you, Jason's autograph wasn't there yet. I showed him the figure and I said, Austin and them kind of hogged the front last year. And he's like, yeah, they did. So he turned it around and signed right across there. You know, he could probably tell from the way I phrased it that I wanted to get everyone's signature on this at one point. If I meet people from my Morphin, I want them to sign this thing. And so he just went right across. He didn't take up a bunch of room, just wire across. He actually put it's Morphin time and then signed his name and then Adam. They all do that uh, for some reason. You know, they all have like Zordon, Jason, Zach, Tommy, all in quotation marks or, you know, in dashes or whatever. So that's pretty cool that they do that and they put their character's name on that. So my autograph collection of Power Rangers is growing for this thing and I couldn't be more happy. Um... Let's see, hang on. There was one other thing that I got signed, but it's still in the suitcase. Hang on. So, the only other thing I got signed, uh, and this one was for free. Uh, Jason Dave, uh, okay, so Johnny was 60 for both the autograph and the selfie that I took with him. Or not the selfie. They call it a selfie, it's just a picture. They have someone else do it. Um, and for the two signatures and the picture, it was 110 for Austin St. John. Uh... And I didn't really mind paying that, honestly. For waiting that long, it was more than I was more than happy to pay it. A lot of people were griping about it, like, "Oh, they should he should give it to us for free." I'm like, "Guys, you waited this long. If it was that important to you, why, why does it matter? <laughs> Just do it. You, you all know it's gonna be worth it." Um, but this guy signed it for free. This is Matt Haley. He did a uh, story in the Linda Carter '77 special comic book. Uh, there was a couple different people. You can see their names there that wrote stories for it. So it was really neat to meet him. I asked him how much his signature was, and he's like, nothing. He's like, are there people that actually charge for that? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he just shook his head like, nah, you don't owe me anything. So after, now let's go through the pops real quick. Um, I didn't buy that many, and they're all going to be reviewed in a separate video. I'm just going to show you guys what they are now. Because uh, I don't want to take up too much time, you know, taking them out of the boxes and stuff. So, the one of the first ones I... Well, hang on. This was the first one. But the first single pop I got was uh, the Martian Manhunter from Just League Unlimited. I'm ready for them to continue this line already. Because this is my favorite show from when I was a kid. Period. But <laughs> I do have this one. It's out of box because the box that mine came in was the definition of the word trash. So I really wanted to get one that was fully intact. And it did come in a pot protector, so that was good. Uh, I paid $25 for this. I didn't look at Sash PD or Prize Price Guy, Pot Price Guy, but I didn't really care. Because, you know, when this thing first came out, everyone was posting on Instagram about how horrible the boxes were. Um, so there's not, there's really not too many that have the boxes in pristine condition because Walmart doesn't give a damn, <laughs> pretty much. I finally have this one in box. Very, very happy to have it, finally. Uh, and then the other one, I got this one at the same booth. And this is Robot Freddy Funko from Funko HQ. I wanted a Robot Freddy ever since I first saw one. I never saw it in real life, but I've seen, you know, pictures and variants of it. Um, so when I saw this guy, I'm like, yeah, I, I really want to get this one. So again, this is an HQ exclusive and we'll be get, taking a closer look at that later. I think that's my f third or fourth Freddy Funko now in my collection. So yay. And then these other two, these were, these ones I bought before those other two. And they're both two packs that I bought at the same booth. The first one is Tom and Jerry, the flocked ones, the ones that cost so much headache when they first came out because Funko for some reason I think put it on their actual shop instead of their pop-up shop when they knew that the that shop wasn't set up to handle that amount of traffic but whatever <laughs> I finally got mine though I had to pay for it I'm not gonna say how much but I had to pay for it. uh pop price guide price if you guys want to find out for yourself but I love flocked pops I loved Tom and Jerry as a kid I, I had to do it this one uh, I've been looking for it ever since it came out, but I never could really find it. I've seen, I know other people found it all over the place. I haven't. Uh, Black Bolt and Lockjaw, which is a San Diego Comic Con 2018 PX Previews Glow in the Dark exclusives, whatever. It's so much for words to say. <laughs> uh, Black Bolt glows in the dark, and uh, Lockjaw is translucent on the bottom to make it look like he's teleporting. And again, all of these will be. 
unboxed in a future video. And those were all the pops I got. Uh, now let's get on. Oh, there's one other thing I totally forgot to go grab. I'll go grab it at the end, okay? Because I already put that up because, again, I already made this video. But this thing I got for free. It's a Black Lightning poster. Uh, the con was sponsored by CW Arkansas. And so they were there giving away a bunch of free stuff with the, uh, you know, TV show on them. And they had this big wheel thing that you spun. And it either landed on, like, a poster or candy or a ball. They had a ball with Black Lightning logo on there, which I got that too, but it's boring if I show it to you. Uh, it's just a little rubber ball, literally. Uh, but mine landed on po poster. My mom's landed on the ball, so we got Black Lightning stuff. They didn't have Supergirl or what else, else I would have gotten this, but this is a really good thing anyway. I love this show, so. Uh, it's really cool. It got a little bent in my suitcase, but again, it was free. <laughs> so. Uh, now let's move on to the action figures. Now this one, I'll be honest, this one's a double. Uh, it's a good price, and I know a couple people who might need it. I don't know for sure, but might, and I got a good deal on it, so I was like, why not? It is the Harley Quinn number one from the Amanda Connor DC Designer Series. Amanda Connor, uh, Amanda Connor is a huge DC artist, and she's also a writer. She wrote a lot of the Harley Quinn comics, so that's why she designed these figures. Um, and her, her art is one of my favorites, honestly, because it's so recognizable. You see the, the, the eyes and the faces that she does, and you know it's hers. Um, so yeah. So this is one of four. These are the others on the back. I didn't see that they had those there. They have a space one, a Christmas one, and a superhero Harley. And this one comes with the Burnt Beaver. If you guys aren't reading the comics, you have no idea about that. But that's Bernie. <laughs> that, that's her pet. Her first pet. And a pop gun. And she does have a stand in the back. So I'm going to ask around and see if anyone needs this. Uh, if not, I may display it out of the box since I already have one. Uh, or, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see. But this next one, I got because I wanted it. <laughs> uh, I've honestly been looking for this everywhere. I don't see these uh, figures anymore in my area since Hastings closed. So, I was very happy to have Vixen, finally. Uh, and she is part of the Arrow set, obviously. You can see some of the other CW characters on the back that I want all of them. John, Constantine, Supergirl, and John Jones, I want these two especially. John Constantine would just be a bonus. But like I said before, uh, the Just League Unlimited was my favorite show as a kid, so I love Vixen. Uh, it, Hot Girl is my favorite character, period. No matter what. Hot Girl Shire Hall is my favorite, period. The one that came in the DC Legion of Collectors box is my one number one favorite pop, period. Okay, it's not going to be worth anything in the future, but I don't care. That one's my favorite. So it stood to reason that I probably wouldn't like Vixen too well, but I actually did. <laughs> I really, really loved her. So having Mari as an action figure, uh, I have a couple. I have like one or two Maris, but not very many. Uh, so having another is definitely a plus for me. Very, very happy to have her. So, And again, those two came in a bundle deal for pretty good price. So nothing to complain about. Now let's talk about the uh, comics I got. That one was one I took, but I didn't get signed. Um... So this isn't all of them, but these are the ones that I got that were more or less pretty valuable. Uh, this one is actually a Wonder Woman comic that is has a COA where it was signed by George Perez. George Perez is one of my favorite writers on Wonder Woman. He started the uh, Wonder Woman Volume 2 and continued on for a very long time in Volume 2. Uh, and, it, you know, that was one of uh, Wonder Woman's longest runs. And this is a very memorable comic, if you read the the, seri uh, the Volume 2 comics. Mindy Meyer was uh, actually her publicist, Wonder Woman's publicist. She wanted to spread the word of the mascara and the Greek gods and everything, and Mindy was pretty much just trying to make money. So, uh, and obviously you can see a little spoiler alert there, but uh, yeah, the signature is right there, and again, COA, so as soon as I saw that, I was like... Yeah, mine. And George Perez did so many more. You can see a list of some of the stuff that he's done. He's, like, super famous in comic books. Like, DC, Marvel, and everything in between. He's done. So, 
gotta love that. These next three, I've read this entire series on digital, and I'm wanting desperately to find all the hard copies. Uh, I haven't had too much luck. They actually had quite a few, but they're so free and expensive that I couldn't get all of them. In fact, I was gonna pass on all of them, but my mom actually paid for some of them for me, so thank you, mom. But this is Gotham City Sirens, one through three. Number one alone was $70. That's how much this book is worth. Uh, I think it's just because of Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy and Catwoman is a bonus. Uh, but yeah, this series centers around them pretty much living in Gotham City together. You can imagine the chaos. So, And it lasts for about, I want to say 20 books, 20 uh, issues. So yeah, but there's two and there is three and these are all the regular covers I don't even know if there are variant covers on these they probably are but I don't know and then the next one so hang on let me get this other one out that I just put down uh, because Jason David Frank was charging a bit more um, I didn't get the comic sign that I wanted to which is no big deal to me I didn't really care but these comics Shattered Grid number 25 actually came in blind bags and I kept my blind bag so it was all, this was all you saw when you picked it up from your comic book shop. And on the inside, it was Lord Draken holding one of the smashed Power Ranger helmets. And this is the one that I opened up and I got the Yellow Ranger, obviously. And I've told you guys before, my favorite Ranger is the blue one. <laughs> so I saw a guy that was selling pretty much, he had all of them, but this is the only one I really wanted. So I got Billy's helmet. Yay. Uh, if I ever meet David Yost, maybe I'll get him to sign this one. I don't know. Uh, but it was pretty cool. I know some people are out there trying to get the full set. I don't really care about the full set. I just wanted to get that one. So, And uh, Trini is my second favorite ranger now. So bonus that I have both of them now. Uh, the other books I got. Nothing too, too special. This one is uh, the annual... Uh, second annual Batman Adventures. This is based off Batman the Animated Series. So I have a few of these comics that I really love. Uh, this one has Etrigan in it, obviously. And I love Etrigan the Demon, so... <laughs> really love that one. And this one, I'm also... I'm really close to completing this set. I'm really close to doing the Just League Unlimited comic books based off the cartoons. But this is one that I was uh, needing. It was the only one I ran across that I needed today. Or yesterday, so this is number 20. So yeah. Now, there's one more comic down here. It's actually the first comic I bought that day. Big boy right here. So, <laughs> this is Batman number one spring issue. Uh, and this is a reprint. This is a 40-year-old reprint. The original one would... Nah, 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 nah. Uh, I will say I spent quite a bit of money on a comic book in the past, but... Uh, yeah, I pro probably won't do that again. Um, but I, It was worth it, but still. Uh, but yeah, this was a reprint. It's held up really well for being 40 years old. Uh, and I'll probably get a frame for it. Um, so yeah. And I googled it when I saw it because I was pretty sure, but I wasn't 100%. Uh, and if the Wikipedia article I looked at was right, this is the first appearance of Catwoman. Obviously it's still a reprint, but pretty cool. So, very happy to have this. Yay. <laughs> it's gonna look really cool on my wall. <laughs> Uh, I'm talking about like it's a man cave. I guess it pretty much is, kind of. <clears throat> I had to go get some stuff that I forgot. <laughs> like I said, some of the stuff I put up already. Um, now this one y'all ain't gonna be able to see too well. Because <laughs> I haven't unwrapped it yet. So this was the only thing that I paid tax on. <laughs> most, most of the time, the reason you go to a con, you still pay con prices, but you don't have to pay tax on it. So usually it's like, okay, this is 50 bucks, this is 25 yeah, real straightforward. This is the only thing I had to pay cents for. <laughs> Six dollars and something cents. But it's a little ball of soap with an Entei trapped inside of it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Entei. They had different Pokemon. And it's clear. You can kind of see through the top there. So I'm fairly certain this one's Entei. <laughs> uh, so I'll have to actually use it to get the figure out. <laughs> um, but yeah, they had a bunch there they had some that was like twice the size but I was like I just want a little one so so I have a uh, Entei trapped in a ball of soap uh, these things I actually left in here but I forgot till I 
sat down again and saw them. Uh, so there was two different booths there that was selling a few trading cards, old trading cards. These are the ones I saw first, and these are Mighty Morphin Power Rangers trading cards. Obviously, there was a lot of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers stuff there for people to get signed. Um, but I bought four of these packs. Because knowing me, I was just going to get two. But knowing me, I would open them up. And I'd be... And I only want to open one up. I want to keep one as a collectible. And I'd be like, I want more. So I went ahead and got four. I'll probably open at least two of them. Maybe three on the channel. And along in that video, I'll be opening these. So I found two other Mighty Morphin Power Ranger ones. I did only get two of these. So that other one will be open last to kind of curb my thirst a little bit. But these two, I think these are older just because the way they feel and look. Uh, I have to actually look at the date on them. I haven't looked yet. And this n last one, I'm actually really excited to look at. I might go ahead and open both of these. This is Supergirl based off the original movie. Now, I'll be honest. I haven't seen the original movie. I plan to get it when it comes out on Blu-ray pretty soon. Um, but for anyone who didn't know, the actress who played Supergirl in the movie is actually the one who plays uh, Supergirl's adoptive mom in the TV show. So I thought that was pretty cool. And this says it's actually... Sticker storybook cards. I don't know. We'll see when it comes out. Probably like little comics or something. One page comics. Now this other thing is another thing I forgot. So my first con. I came back with a stack of artwork. And only half of it is up. The rest is still buried in a cabinet in the living room. Uh, just because I don't, A, have the wall space for it. I want to get rid of some of my action figures that I've had for a while and try to free up some space. Um, but yeah, I just don't have the room for it and I don't have the frames to put them in. So I try not to go too crazy. Uh, in fact, I wasn't planning on buying anything, but when it looked like I wasn't going to meet Jason David Frake, F Frank, Frank, uh, I went ahead and bought one artwork. And I don't regret it, because <laughs> it's so freaking cute. Uh, it didn't come in this sleeve. I had to put it in this one when I got home. But this is Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas. I have no idea who the artist is. Uh, it wasn't the guy running the booth, I can tell you that. Because <laughs> if it was, he'd be offering up autographs and stuff to make more money, but no. Uh, but yeah, it was 10 bucks, so no big deal. So it's a chibi version of Sally holding a little doll of Jack. Zero's right there next to her, and you can see a scene from the movie in the background, so it's cute all the way around. Had a bunch of Disney, DC uh, characters, so pretty much my stuff. Uh, but Sally was the one I picked out, so it was really cute. All right, let's move that so it doesn't get bent. And let's go on to the figures. So these three figures I bought at the same booth that I bought the big Batman one and the signed uh, Wonder Woman from. He had bins and bins and bins of old loose figures and stuff. And I picked these three out. They're all Pokemon. This is Ash, and I also got Team Rocket. Uh, now, I actually have all these figures in box, but uh, a couple years ago, I found Misty at a con. Misty came with Ash, and, you know, Jesse and James came in and packed by themselves. And I picked Misty up for a good price, and I'm like, you know, I see these guys. May as well complete the set. So, <laughs> both in and out of box. Uh, now, I don't know if these... All these have horrible paint jobs, by the way, because they're so old and been played with a little bit. Um, now, I don't know if these figures ever released in America. The ones I have in box are in Japanese packaging, so I honestly don't know if these were ever released in English or whatever. Uh, they're not articulated. They're just, you know, stagnant figures, but I don't care. They're awesome, <laughs> and they'll look really cool alongside Misty and my other... Uh, Pokemon figure, so very happy. Uh, Jessie's the one whose face looks the most dirty, <laughs> so I may try to clean her up a little bit. Uh, it's mainly just scuff marks and stuff, so. Uh, yeah. Most people get these to display, which I don't. A lot of people judge people like adult collectors who play with their action figures. I don't. I'm not someone who usually does. Sometimes I do, not always. It doesn't matter how old you are, you can still have a little bit of fun. Okay, so all these others are Power Ranger action figures. And we'll go through Mighty Morphin first. So I found the blue and the pink version of this one last year, and I found the yellow. So these were released with the original movie. Um, I, I have yet to find one with their 
uh, blaster still attached, but it doesn't really matter. They're really cute, or not cute, but cool. Uh, I showed this to my mom after I got it, and she's like, oh, your cousin had all those growing up, and I'm like, well, what the heck did he do with them? <laughs> I want them. Uh, but you can see the, the coin is just a sticker, so it's rubbing off. You can barely see the bear on her chest, but it's there. Uh, and the others are barely hanging on, too. But they're all just going to be standing beside each other on one of my shelves. So they won't be rubbed off anymore, thankfully. <clears throat> but yeah, it looks really cool. I'm really still hoping to find the other three. So fingers crossed I can. But yeah, there is Aisha. So, and I never did check if she could stand very well on her own. And her legs are a little bit loose, the joints. But yeah, if you play with her a little bit, she could stand. Good. Uh, so let's go through the rest of the Mighty Morphin. Not that many, actually. <laughs> now, there was a whole bunch of Mighty Morphin figures there. Um, but like I said, I'm just looking for the big metallic ones. Uh, and I came across these ones, and I was like, what the heck? So, this is Lord Zed without his staff. Half his staff. It was all these little bitty figures. I don't know who made these. It just Well, I know who made them. It was Bandai. Um, and it says 94, so I'm guessing they were made in 94. I don't know where they're from, though. Like, if they were from a playset or something, I don't know. But a whole bunch of villains was in a box together, so I just got all the different ones that I saw. <coughs> Lord Zed, they had two of them, both of them staff was broken so uh this guy i don't remember his name <laughs> i know he was a booze or babu or whatever that guy's name a friend but he didn't really do anything so whatever <laughs> but i got him uh and then i also got babu whatever his name is i don't know <laughs> but i got him too so there he is I got Goldar, which we all know who he is, so yay. Got Goldar. This is actually, they had more Goldars than they had any of them. That actually kind of surprised me. I don't know if that's how they started out. I'm guessing so, because I don't think so many people would be going through the bins looking for this guy. So, uh, but they had quite a few uh, Goldars. They look like they could be game pieces almost. <laughs> you can play Monopoly with these guys. And then I got Finster. Now, I actually saw a Finster that... Uh, earlier that day that was about this size and I almost got him and I ended up putting him back and when I came back earlier he was gone and so when I saw the little one I was like yeah I'm gonna get him <laughs> and then I looked through the and saw the other four so there is Finster. All right, so let's go ahead with this guy so when I was a kid story time I started watching Power Rangers Wild Force that was the first uh, Power Rangers series I ever watched and I fell in love with it. My first crush was Princess Shayla. <laughs> um, and I'm still waiting for her action figure. There was only one ever made. But anyway, so they came, They had these little morphing action action figures where you pushed a button, they spun around, and they went from their normal, you know, regular face to their helmet. Uh, and I wanted them all of the Wild Force Rangers. They made one for each ranger. The only one I ever found was Cole and Merrick, the red and the uh, lunar wolf ranger one day i came home from school because my mom and i lived with my grandparents at the time and i found out that my mom that my grandma had taken all of my boy toys away and threw them away my power ranger action figures my power ranger megazords my pokemon dolls all that she could find there were some that i had put in a little purse that my aunt gave me those were spared uh but the most of them were thrown away and i was very upset and that's why today when i see toys labeled boy toys girl toys i get really pissed off super pissed off um you know i played with barbie dolls i played with baby dolls i played with you know i played with girl toys but i also play played with other toys and she just hated that and uh yeah I'm still a little bit mad about it. I know I'm like a grown adult now, so I shouldn't be too mad about it anymore, but I still am because I really hate when people do that. So if you're a parent, please let your kids play with anything they want. It's not going to hurt them. It's not going to harm them. It's just letting them be a kid. Maybe letting them be who they want to be. But anyway, so 
I was on the hunt as a kid to find all five of them. After those two were thrown away, I pretty much gave up. And then as an adult, when I started going to cons, I'm like, I want to start this search up again. I want to see if I can find them. Last year, I found Merrick. And I was so happy. It doesn't work anymore, but I don't care. I was so very happy to have it. Um, and today, or yesterday, I found Cole. And yeah, guys, I know what's going on with his the actor who played him. It's disappointing to know that, you know, someone who played one of your heroes as a kid did something like that. Um, but it doesn't mean I don't love Wild Force as much. You know, I don't condone what he did whatsoever. Um, but it doesn't mean I don't love Wild Force, you know, just as much as I always have. So I was still very happy to have this. It's like I'm right back to where I was when I was a kid now. So I'm very happy. Actually, I'm a little bit further ahead because I got another one down here. But this one, it works a little bit. It goes to the coal head, but it doesn't go back. Um, but it does have a button here for a can. So that works. I am perfectly fine with that. Uh, so yeah, very, very happy to finally have him back in my collection. I know this isn't the same one. In fact, the one I has probably melted down um, in, a in the bonfire that we used to burn our trash in. So yeah, but anyway, the other one I found, I didn't even know this one existed. Sorry if you heard that clicking sound. Um, but I didn't know this one existed. This is Zanaku. So he's the only uh, villain of the Wild Force I've found so far. And they actually had two of him. I kind of wish I had all went ahead and gotten both. But <laughs> uh, I didn't want to be too stingy about it. So his is the same concept. Spin him around and he turns. Got a little bit stuck there. These are still a little old. So you can't be too mad if they don't work perfectly. Goes into the Merrick head. And again it has a button on the side. I don't... I can't remember, were they supposed, maybe they weren't supposed to morph back when you squeeze their legs again. I don't know, maybe it was always the button, I also can't remember. But these work, the Merrick, the pure Merrick one does not, but I don't care. I'm very, very happy to have these uh, guys in my collection. Anything Wild Force I'm gonna take. <laughs> if I can afford it, I'm gonna take it when I find it a con, period. Uh, so the other Rangers I found, I'm gonna start with the... Alyssa here because she's the most boring. <laughs> I love Alyssa as the character but the figure itself is kind of boring uh, because she has minor articulation in her elbows and her hips and on her head and on her shoulders um, but nothing to be oh okay apparently the arms are like uh, okay so she does have an action pose of some sort I don't know how it works but she has it. <laughs> she's missing her saber all these are missing their accessories if they had one they're missing one so <laughs> And this is the least detailed out of them, but I just, I, I went back to that same booth and I looked down and there she was and I'm like, yep, mine. <laughs> so, uh, I got her and I got three more down here. I have Danny and you push the lever on his back and it kind of goes like that. I'm not going to do it too much because I don't want people making comments, but uh, I'm guessing he was supposed to hold his crystal saber and do that. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I have the Black Ranger. Uh, this is so cool. I really, I, I just go gaga over Wild Force figures. I do, I don't. <laughs> um, but this is Merrick. So his action figure is again a little stiff. You can, his seams are coming apart a little bit, so I'm trying not to move him around too awful much. Um, but you can see how the arm moves and his head moves at the same time uh, and again missing his what what is what was his called the q saber or something like that he had the uh pull cube saber thing uh but there is the lunar wolf ranger awesome uh they've actually made a modern one of him in a two-pack uh recently and it's still on store shelves but i can't remember what villain he came with I, maybe it was odious from the uh, current uh, Ninja Steel, but I can't honestly can't remember. So the only other Wild Force thing I found was the Conga Zord. So this is one of the Mega Zords shrunk down, <laughs> uh, and there's wheels on it. And when you spin, go, it it just spins the Polar Bear Zord around. And I don't know if that was supposed to mimic the Polar Bear Zord blasting its freeze ray or something. I don't know. 
Um, it looks like they both had missiles that they could put in their mouths at one point and launch. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'll have to do some research on that. So, I don't care. I, I love this anyway. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care how many accessories it's missing. I don't care if they work anymore. I'm just glad to have them. <clears throat> because, again, th this show was a big part of my childhood. Okay, guys, so that's it. Um, now, this is the only con I go to every year. Uh, this was my fourth year there. Uh, so... I didn't go as crazy this year as I did in past years. <laughs> I actually didn't buy a single statue, which is, for me, that's a record. I went there looking for uh, a specific statue, uh, the Green Ranger. Green Ranger. It's going to take me a while to get Power Rangers out of my head. <laughs> the Green Lantern bombshell statue. Uh, and there wasn't any bombshell statues there, period. There were some cool statues, but not uh, any that I desperately needed. Uh, there was def definitely some I wanted, but I restrained myself. Um, but yeah, I I spent not not as much as I usually do, and I'm proud of myself. So, but uh, for the stuff I did buy, again, it's my the only con I go to every year, so I kind of justify it that way. <laughs> when else am I gonna get to it? So yeah, I was I had a great time. It was totally worth standing in line all that time to get uh, Jason David Frank's autograph. A big thank you to him uh, and Johnny because they both worked with the convention to make it happen in that panel room to make the them wait for the signature. So thank you <laughs> to them. Uh, and I uh, again, I also have a uh, giveaway going on for a Disney Villains box from uh, Hot Topic. Uh, the vid the rules and everything are in the other video labeled "100 Sub Giveaway." Pretty easy to find. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, again, thank you guys for watching and for watching the channel and supporting me. It, it is really awesome. That was my video for today. Let me know what you guys liked about this, what you didn't like. Do you hate Wild Force like most of the other Ranger fans out there? Because I, I was actually talking to one guy, and I showed him all the figures I had. He was like, oh, not cool. I'm like, it's just as cool as every other series. <laughs> Of Power Rangers. A lot of people don't like it because it's just animal themed. Because, you know, a lot of other Power Rangers series at the time was like outer space and time traveling and all that stuff. Like, but this is cool too. <laughs> this is cool too, and I love this series, so I was very happy to have them. The only funny thing about this is I have a Blue Ranger, a Max, in the other room that I found last year as well. So the only Ranger I'm missing is the Yellow Ranger. And she's my favorite. I really need to find. I really need to find a tailor. Uh, so yeah, gotta got be on the hunt for a tailor. Uh, but anyway, thank you guys so so much for watching. Remember, it's a community, not a competition. And I'll see y'all later. Bye.